Hey everyone, I uh, thought that I'd do another little art sequence for Dark Sun here. So once again, uh, working on um, kind of quick drawings. This one's a little bit faster than, or a little bit, um, a little bit slower to, again, take a little bit more time than the last one I did. Uh, it's not meant to be a gesture drawing. Um, I kind of figured I would mix in a few pieces that were um, a little bit less gestury and sketchy. Um, and this is going to be one of those. So this one would sit on the right-hand side of the right-hand page of a double-page spread uh, and would basically just kind of be the side border of that. And so you'd have all your writing would be over here. Um, so in this one, I wanted to do a, uh, a picture of Gith. And they are uh, descendants of Gith Yankee, heavily mutated on Dark Sun, if you don't know the history of them. Um, but they're sort of a degenerate race. And for Athos, they're kind of the equivalent of orcs. They're sort of, they can be low level to high level, depending on what you want your players to face. Um, but they're kind of an interesting race kind of a core cornerstone of the monsters that you'll meet at least the humanoid ones out in the waste uh but a good number of them live in the mountains so i uh thought it would be kind of cool to just kind of show them living on a sketchy cliff you've got one sitting here that's just being all creepy this right here is just going to be the um really quick kind of a sketch. You can sort of see that I've got one sitting back here in the background and then a couple looking over the shoulder. Uh, and then of course you got this main one that's going to be the focal point right here. And again, this is just kind of getting down the uh, general anatomy of it and kind of posing the shape. You can kind of see that I went on a uh, bunch of different things. So it's just kind of reaching out, pointing with its left hand down at something, presumably people. Um, and so uh, what I'm working off as my basis, uh, there's been a lot of drawings of Gith over the years, but the one that I'm going to be using is one from this one right here. Uh, some hack did this one back in, I think it's 2006. Of course, that's, that's me. I'm the hack. Um, I think this one still pops up if you Google uh, monster images on... Um, Gith, this is one of the ones that will show up. Uh, I don't know if it's still in the top rankings. Probably not, but um, kind of happy with this one. Sort of like the way it looks, so I'm going to kind of base uh, this Gith here off of that. Just kind of take it the same way. Um, so I'm going to put on my blue light blockers here. Uh, so some of the key anatomy points on Gith is... Um, they're always hunched over. They're stand up. They'd probably be about seven feet tall or so. Uh, they only have three fingers, no thumbs. So they've got their little claws like that. So always trying to make it so that it looks like they could accurately hold something. That's always the little challenge with these guys. Uh, and with this one, you can definitely see the uh, the influences of Detrelizy, even in the rock, just kind of the loose strokes and stuff like that. Um, and I just thought that we would dive in and get this rolling. I don't really need that yet since since I drew it. I kind of know what it looks like. Um, let me go in a little bit here. Uh, probably what I'll do is focus mainly on this guy. Uh, start by drawing on this arm um, and build it out from there. Uh, so I want to keep this layer, but I don't want it to be as overpowering as it is now that I kind of have figured out where I want it to be and how I want it to look. I can just um, knock down the opacity a little bit, and that way I keep the scale. And then I can just make another layer and start drawing in the actual shape. Uh, let me check real quick and make sure that I've actually got this on. Yes, I do. Okay. Um, so one of the important things about, um, about anatomy, and you'll hear me talk about this a lot, is uh, just kind of keeping track of, uh, let's undo that so that we're not, drawing. there we go. Uh, one of the important things to keep track of on anatomy 
is uh, we open something. Yeah, let's do that. Here. I'm guessing I am missing somewhere up here. Oh, it <laughs> actually popped it up on my uh, my review screen rather than my other screen problem of doing things. Yeah, I was wondering what was that. So, wondering what was happening. This was on another monitor, so I don't need that up. I wanted this. Okay, and uh, same thing. We're gonna go with the color swatch. Um, I want it now. I actually do want to do this, so uh, I want to keep it in here. And so in this way, when I'm going with the shading and everything, I'm staying within the same color palette. So that way, when I'm doing darker and lighter and all that, it will look like the same piece of rock. And there'll be times when I break away from that. Like if I uh, wanted to put like a green bush on here or something, obviously I wouldn't start with brown. Uh, but where I was going to go with that was um, make sure that I've got the right layer up here. Yeah, I do. Uh, so starting with anatomy, anatomy is always really important. Then I'll start getting into drawing this. Uh, so generally what you're going to do is you're going to start with something that looks like a stick figure. So you start with the spine and the head, and this will be roughly half the height of your character. So, um, this is just kind of generally the way they do that. And then your pelvis is going to be kind of a shape like that. Um, and then bearing that in mind, then you have the rib cage, which will come down like this, swing up and go around. And again, this is just to kind of get the anatomy down. The scale is actually done in another part. Uh, so you have to actually go a little bit further. Um, then you have your leg come down like this. And again, you can kind of play with this depending on whether it's a human or not. Um, but this is always kind of the general rules for anatomy right here. So you start with that. Then you can kind of start breaking out. The head's going to be a little bit bigger. You're going to have your clavicle kind of come across right there. That's your collarbone. And attach out here. Then the upper arm goes to about even with the bottom of the rib cage. And then the forelimbs will go even with the bottom of the pelvis. So right about there. And then your hands will go there. And again, you'll notice that I'll, I'll play with this, especially like if I want to make something that looks more primitive, I'll generally make the arms a lot longer or something like that. I'll just make it uh, seem a little more primitive because people will associate that more with like uh, lesser primates like uh, orangutans or uh, chimpanzees or something have very long uh, arms for brachiation. Uh, and then on the back, and so you're going to have your, your ribs are going along there. Um, so then you can kind of start putting in the muscles. So you have your abdominals here, which are cut in half. And then got that, uh, this is kind of where, um, edge lines will come in. And so generally it'll follow a flow kind of like that. And then like that. Um, so your outer, outer calf will be a little bit lighter. This one will be a little bit longer. So this one's always going to be a little bit shorter. So same thing. It comes down, crosses, and then comes up and crosses that way. You have that there, that there, your shoulder, uh, your pectoral muscles will come along like this. And they kind of go out to form your shoulders like that. Bicep kind of plugs in, tricep comes from behind, and then these muscles, of course, do that. And so same thing. So you're going to sort of see me working these shapes in, and of course you got this, and that does another cross right there. And then that's going to be where your collarbones meet, your shoulders are going to come up there. And then of course you're going to get like your head like that. Uh, that's the general idea. And then you can just kind of play out, get the feet on there, and bust it out. That's general anatomy right there. Uh, and that's kind of how it'll play out. Of course, that's real quick, real simple, but you get the idea. And so we're just going to 
Actually, let's just drag that one out. So with that in mind, you'll sort of see me, especially with any sort of a humanoid monster, you'll see me apply that on here. Uh, and I'll show you with this one right here, you can see that right there, there's your shoulder blade, there's the arm, there's the other arm, there's the rib cage right there, and you can sort of see that I'm breaking in the general anatomy right here and I'll, I'll never lose sight of that general anatomy even if it's a monstrous creature so with that in mind uh let's go ahead and start going in and knock the opacity way down because i don't want this to um be overpowering plus i want to work over top and i want to be able to see where my lines are so uh, i'm going to name this um go with that now we'll start drawing um so i kind of want to zoom in a little bit on this one because the whole focal point is probably going to be right here so this needs to be pretty strong with uh with the finger and the nail coming through and you'll kind of notice once i start really get going i might talk a little bit less just to kind of focus on what i'm doing but know that I always care that you're listening. Uh, so one thing I uh, might do on this one, just because this is going to be sitting on a full picture, I mean, it looks decent from up here. This is a little bit on my on my current screen this is a little bit smaller than an eight and a half by eleven so what I want to be sure of is that at about this level it doesn't show up super pixelated if it's really pixelated and obvious that's a digital drawing rather than uh, a little bit ambiguous of whether it's digital or um, or done on uh, paper um, I, I want to make sure that it always kind of feels like it was it was done original, <laughs> just on a sheet of paper. That's kind of my uh, kind of my preferred way of going. Um, so of course, GIF are super skinny. So we're going to start out with really narrow anatomy here. And you can sort of see on this guy how his arm is. Um, and you got the tricep coming in right there. And people will forgive a whole bunch on your drawings if you get the anatomy right. Um, it's kind of like the opposite of the Uncanny Valley, uh, which I don't know if you know what the Uncanny Valley is. Uncanny Valley is kind of the thing that... Um, you especially see it with uh, CGI, computer graphics. Um, it's the point where something starts to become so real that uh, it, it gets spooky or creepy. So um, the, uh, oh, I forget what it was, the Polar Express, the movie with uh, Tom Hanks that came out ages ago. Um was a great example of that. It's kind of early CGI, and everybody thought that was, you know, this monumental thing that would change cinema forever. Instead, just people were creeped out by it because it, the faces were just human enough that you could tell they were wrong. And on the flip side of that, you can have things like anime, um, where they've got these gigantic eyes where if you saw them on a real person, you'd be freaked out. Uh, and the faces are very simple. So, I mean, you've got faces that kind of look like this. They're just this ridiculous horror show that if you were to see that walking down the street, it'd be creepy. But when you see it in anime, your brain just kind of accepts and goes, oh yeah, that's a person. And you're fine with it. Uh, but hitting that uncanny valley you kind of want to push the bounds, but if you go too far, uh, people are going to be more judgmental. 
So you have to be a little careful how far you push things and where you push them. So like this, the features are very exaggerated. It's uh, another thing you can sort of tell that I've been influenced by Tony D. Turd Lazy on a lot of these. Um, but it's kind of the same idea that you've got a lot of uh, humanoid features, but you can kind of play with it a lot and people will give you a lot more leeway if you just exaggerate some things rather than go try to go like photorealistic. The more photorealistic you go, you better nail it or people are going to get freaked out, especially with monsters. Landscapes, not so much. People, it matters. Uh, so let's go ahead and start doing this. So we've got, that's coming in. So we've got the lat coming in there. So the question is how much clothing do we want to have on this thing? Are these going to be really degenerate or are these going to be uh, just slightly degenerate? And it's a good question. We'll kind of keep playing with it. Um, I haven't quite decided how much clothes. I was thinking in my head that I was going to make this more of a shaman. Um, kind of put a bird skull on him, have things hanging off. Um, not sure if I'll go so far as to have like armbands and all of that. I kind of figured when I was drawing this one, this one was clearly a warrior. This one's going to be more of a shaman, but... Um, Gith don't have as much differentiation in that. Uh, one thing I was debating is because Gith descended from Gith Yankee, they are a matriarchal society. And so your shamans, your religious leaders, uh, generally the leaders of the tribe would probably be female. So I was debating kind of making this one a little more female looking than you usually see them. Like this one's clearly a male or it's probably a male. Like I said, you can play with the Idaho Uncanny Valley and get somewhere special. So this head right here that I kind of blocked in, um, I'm going to take a quick look at the rest of the body. I think that head is too big. So I am going to shrink it down a little bit for this, although I am going to lay it out there a bit more. And so here I'm kind of matching some of the shape language I did with that one. Um, I might even include this image in the book that I'm doing, uh, just because it was no rights reserved on that particular project. It was just kind of a fun project that a lot of us put together. Uh, I do want to keep that underbite. I kind of think that that's a neat look for them. So makes them look a little bit more animalistic. And keep that up there. Kind of keep those large eyes. And I'm going to do some shading in here just to sort of uh, play it out. Uh, but that'll, that'll be in a bit. So I'll do that there. That there. Have a tongue coming out. Uh, this coming up. Yeah, and this is kind of one of the problems of drawing on this scale is that I can kind of see how it looks here, but the important thing is what it looks like from about there. Yeah, and I'm not too thrilled with the way that's coming out. Uh, obviously, I want to put an ear on there. Um, but sort of like I was talking about on the last one, there's a lot of near far on this too. So, um, you kind of have to back in and back out because something that doesn't look good when you're right up on top of it might actually look decent when you get back a little ways. Uh, so I'm going to do a quick rough of the head of kind of how I see it going. Um, so I might exaggerate that mouth, really make it hang open. Yeah, I'm liking that a little bit better. Um, sort of capturing that nose and the forehead 
can be a little tricky at this scale, but it's kind of worth the uh, worth the exercise. So we got that. We'll put in a cheekbone right there. Might give them smaller eyes just to make it look a little more threatening. So let's see how that looks. Do you want to draw that back? See how that looks from a distance. Yeah, liking that a little bit better. So now I need to put those ears in, and I think we're good on that head. I'm digging that. So we have an ear coming back here. That nose there. Do a little push pull with this. Pick up the opacity of the eraser. And that's almost got like a bat look to it. So let's back out. See how that looks. Yeah, that ain't bad. Let me clear a little bit right there. Put a couple teeth there and bring in a tongue. I really do want a tongue coming out there. Just think. That's that's channeling a little bit of Brahm. Yeah, there we go. Um, so now I do kind of want to think about clothes a little bit. Uh, just if this one's going to be a shaman, it would make more sense if she had uh, some clothes. Just anything to even just designate her as like a leader. Um, like you can see that this one has the big shell on its back. He's got little earrings and stuff. Um, I could go a similar route with her. Uh, I do want to jump in here real quick and blast that out of there. Just make that. And uh, like I said, I I am going to go through and add some uh, shading to this when I'm done. Um, just nothing, nothing too complex, but just like a highlight here or there to just kind of cement the, uh, the general shape language that I'm doing here. Um, so the way that she's doing this is she's kind of reaching out with that, with that left arm and pulling her right arm back. So she's really torquing her body around. And so we can kind of show that by showing the anatomy here on the side. Uh, so typically the way that I will draw these is uh, naked at first, um, just to make sure that I'm nailing the musculature. And then once I have kind of that shape down, and I, I would do that even with these, you can sort of see that the, um, with the exception of some of these where it's hanging, where I draw it later, uh, that a lot of these will really hug the body. And that's primarily because I draw them without clothes first, just because it makes for uh, better anatomy. Um, so let's move it over here. So uh, Gith are powerful leapers. So I try to draw them with these big calves, like outsized to the size of their body, again, playing with the proportions, and very large feet, like very large, very powerful looking feet is kind of what I'm going for. So we'll bring that down. Look over there. It's kind of hugging onto the cliff with this foot. Um, make sure that we're getting that. Put in a little line right there and right there. Pull that up. And we kind of need it to be clear what that is. So when I swing back with the highlights, I'll I'll definitely blast in the uh, the little highlights on that. In fact, one of the things I could do, yeah, there we go. Uh, go down to shading and uh, um, take this out. Uh, let's just go with this a little bit bigger. 
just to make sure that when when I come back to this, I'm I'm seeing what I drew as opposed to what's in my mind right this second because it might be two different things. Uh, so back up to the first layer. And keeping track of your layers is always kind of the trick when you're doing digital paintings. And so right there, I think that rib cage will come a little bit further down. There we go. This leg is a little bit higher up um, just to kind of give it a little bit more. Uh, the goal is to kind of make it look like they're precariously on the edge of this uh, of this cliff, but they're obviously really comfortable moving around in that environment. And so I kind of want to convey that that danger that these are uh, these are creatures that this is their home and you as a viewer are just kind of viewing because you probably wouldn't stand on the edge of a cliff and lean out and scream at whatever's down below you but these guys would which kind of tells you something about them uh so here's another little sort of trick that i'm going to do back here is the back arm i'm going to keep a little bit lighter and uh quite a bit less distinct just to make it look like it's um like it's a little bit out of focus or moving and then i'm going to put this spear in there and the top of the spear you'll see i am going to do with a little bit more detail than the bottom of the spear because my goal is to kind of have that be a focal point of it and so again with my thing with triangles it's going to kind of form an interesting shape right there and the whole point is coming in uh, this way and so it leads your eye from the writing into the image and so this is one of those things that you always want to be thinking of is that people are going to be reading up here uh, sort of see this arrow here, this sort of subconscious arrow, and it'll draw their eye across here. This will kind of lead them up and back down. This will lead them out. Then they can go back to reading, but it'll keep kind of flowing through. And with your art, you always kind of want to have that flow where it's just dragging people in and out constantly. Uh, so let's go ahead and delete that arrow because I think that that would be a little bit too unsubtle if I were to actually leave that in there. Um, so yeah, that's I'm liking the way that's looking. So let's go in. And again, I'm kind of trying to keep these a little bit fast and loose. I These, again, aren't going to be hanging on anyone's walls. This is just to kind of convey a point. Um, and so here... We're going to spend a little more time on this to the point where I might just darken this up just a hair. And one of the things I'm debating here was it maybe even making this blade metal to kind of really show that this was a, uh, a leader. But um, no, we're not doing that. Dark sun, got to be bone. So or obsidian, probably more likely obsidian. So there we go, let's do that. 18 is probably a little bit too. There we go. And uh, this is kind of a precursor. Um, one of the things I'm planning for the uh, the cover of this book is going to be a gith uh, shaman standing in front of a wall or like crouching in front of a wall uh, and um, I'm, I'm going to really play with the colors on that one of course that one will not be a quick sketch that'll be one that I spend quite a bit of time on just if it's the cover I want it to actually draw people in and not have them say oh god the art in this book is going to be atrocious no thank you gross Never want people looking at your art and saying, gross. 
Okay, so we got that there. Gonna darken up that back. Again, just to kind of seed it into the image. Um, I am gonna tackle that again with the shading, but just kind of to draw a point. There we go. Okay, I really do want to emphasize the both the strength and the sort of starving nature of these things. Just they should look desperate. Um, I might have overdone it with those last two. There we go. Um, so let's see. I'm kind of liking the way that's going. Okay, so now we're going to go in and do some clothes. Serve the same thing that I did here. This is a shaman, so chances are pretty good it would be hanging back a little bit and letting these other guys join in the fight um, or enjoying the fight, I guess, would be more accurate. Uh, rather than fight itself, or if it would be fighting, it would probably be fighting the uh, um, psionics or spells. Some of these guys are spellcasters. Um, so we're going to kind of go a little bit light on the armor for this one. but not non-existent. So the question is, where would its armor be? Yeah, I'm going to make it an obvious she. Okay, so... Even though these creatures are kind of savage and probably wouldn't have a whole bunch of modesty, I think in this case it would be more um, a status symbol if it is wearing clothing rather than actual, uh, hey, look at my frilly pants kind of a deal. So there we go. A little bit in there. That might be all we need on that. Let's take a look back. So again, you'll see me do this a lot. This is near far. Um, so just kind of want to pull back and kind of see how it reads. One thing I might do is throw in a little shading right now just to kind of Ground that arm back there because I'm kind of losing it. And um, I kind of want to poke this and the finger out into the words. So you're going to have writing coming across like this, uh, but it'll kind of hit this point and stop. And so it'll the whole goal here is to kind of stop the viewer or the reader's attention and force them to focus on this thing and then, you know, lead them into the image and then lead them out. So now I can have a little bit of fun, draw this one in the background, a couple more up here in the foreground. Um, let's see. Do I want anything more there? I kind of want to put something weird off the back. So, um, Boxa would, or hey, not Boxa, Brom was always really uh, a big fan of that, where, you know, he'd have like some spike coming out and like flags and stuff like that. So, that is very much a part of the. Uh, Dark Sun motif because he was the guy that did most of the concept art for early Dark Sun. Um, so that ain't bad. Just something to kind of break up the shape language a little bit. Uh, Just 
going to do something a little ambiguous here in the background so it's not totally clear to the viewer whether that is like a sketch that was abandoned or actually part of it and kind of letting the viewer decide some of the uh some of the action isn't always a bad idea like deciding what they're going to see in this so kind of breaking with what I was going to say I'm going to put in a little bit of shading right now uh just to kind of ground it for me. Otherwise, I'll keep tweaking it. There we go. And we're going to go out. So that is probably about the scale it would be on a page. Let's see. Eight and a half by 11. Yeah, probably pretty close to that. How does that look on that screen? Not bad. Uh, not quite as clean as this, but this was, um, I think, 18 by 11. Uh, I did this one. Uh, so pretty big sheet is probably about that big by about that big. Um, and again, you can sort of see that I was tackling it with 0 0.005. So really fine, tight detail. Um, which is good for a drawing like this. Um, but for a drawing like this, where you want to catch action, you want to catch motion. Um, I'm not trying to catch personality in the individual face so much as I'm just trying to catch personality of the whole motion. Uh, so here we go. We're going to draw this little guy in the background. I'm going to make him or her, whatever it is, uh, to make this one a little more abstract doesn't need to be as clear what it is in fact if it's a little ambiguous like it should definitely be the same species that might be a bit much let's say so there I've had them cowering down a little bit. That might be a bit dark. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make this one a bit lighter because it does need to be in the background. And I'll um I'll bring it back with uh with shading. So I kinda wanna catch that underbite. So there we go. Um might want to pull back on this one just so that I'm not overpowering anything so on this one let's kind of catch the nose right there catch an eye right back there should put the ear going looking question is do i want that one screaming too or would they be a little bit leery about stealing this one's thunder so i think that actually might not be bad we'll just leave it like that and pull this hand over and go back and it's it's fine if the viewer when they're first looking at this doesn't quite get that that's another gif sitting behind them i'm i'm okay with that like if they're looking at it and they're they could tell it's kind of supposed to be a person but they're not too sure what it is that's actually okay i'm okay with that Go there, a little bit of shading there, a little bit of shading there. Maybe even have a spear sticking out here. Yeah, and one of the problems with working digitally is that when you get a straight line like that, it makes it look a lot more digital. So, uh, I don't know, at least to me. So I kind of try to stick away from horizontal lines just because 
kind of ruins the illusion. Turn it up a little bit, opacity down, just darken it up. Because unlike this one, I probably won't be doing much with this guy. Like that'll that'll probably be it. Now these guys I kind of need to focus a little bit more on. I've got one head coming in from this side. Um and again, with the shading, I need to blow that out. So we've got a little bit of face right there. Right back. Go in here. Let's see, we're 10%. That's way too light. Go to about 40. So this one can be a bit bigger and more intimidating. Because it's up front, standing up. but it's still kind of taking a back seat to the leader. Switch that right around there. And again, we're kind of at the point where it just needs to be a suggestion off to the side. It doesn't necessarily need to be like a full-on detailed whole body because it's just coming in from the side. You don't want the focal point to be this thing basically coming in from the edge. My email is blowing up. What's going on? So I get for doing this on a work day. Of course, work ended two hours ago, but that's okay. Never ends, right, guys? All right. So let's see. There we got that. Pull that nose out a little bit more. What are we looking there? Now I'm not totally buying that. Let's see. I'm not in love with that. We're going to take that out. Ah, uh, so take it up nothing wrong with admitting a mistake people just sometimes you can compound the thing and make it even more so same thing that we did with the other one keeping a little loose I think um, maybe where I went wrong this one needs a helmet Hmm. I'm not liking it. I think we take that one out. Okay. So, I like that one. Uh, let's go back to shading. Let's put a line up right there. There. Anyone that watches this video will know they exist. Anyone else? On their own. Okay. So, this one right here that you can kind of see. Uh, is a little rougher. And so I think what I need to do here is, because um, this one's showing most of its shoulder, I want this one to be bigger. Uh, so a little bit more like this one. Um, but I need the anatomy to be right. So I'm going to make a new layer. Uh, let's kick that up a little bit more. So we're going to start with the skull. And again, this is the anatomy study, so I don't really need to nail like the details. I need to nail the actual structure is what I'm going for. So you can sort of see this one's going to be a lot bigger than the other one. Shoulder blade there. 
eyes sitting back there. I kind of want this one to be yelling too, because this one's going to be, I don't know, hunting for her job, I guess. Uh, so we got the ear sitting back there. That there, that there. And that shoulder there. I'm trying to remember how I was going to do this one. I think I might do it this way so that the hand is kind of grasping. So whereas this one's standing up and just right on the edge and totally not afraid of anything, maybe this one's a little bit more insecure, so has its hand on the edge there. Um, other hand would definitely be holding that spear, though, but maybe holding it back a little bit, holding it down here so it's not a threat to the leader. Just kind of as a spear like that. Angle it a little bit more that way. Again, we can kill some of that. I want the head to poke up a little bit more. I kind of like that big. Is that the occipital lobe? I think that's the occipital lobe. Uh, don't quote me on that. Um, yeah, you, you don't want to do surgery off of what an artist says about anatomy. Because we will definitely BS our ways through that. Uh, so there, there's our two legs. Maybe bring it more that way, more that way. There we go. Yeah, I like the looks of that. Okay, let's uh, zoom out a little bit, sort of see what we think of that. What do you think? I think we could just leave it like that. That's probably fine. You're being attacked by a stick figure. That is very scary. So let's bring this back on down. Keeping it to about this range while I'm drawing is probably a good idea. So I want to make that 72. Let's knock that down to about 40. Do the same thing we did with the other one. Bring it down to about 50. What happens if we lose rough entirely? Now you see, I kind of like the way that rough sort of adds those things. I don't even mind that showing this other one that I was originally going to draw because I like showing my mistakes sometimes. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this guy. So again, just kind of his general thought process here in his little gif head is I want to yell because, you know, I'm a gif doing my gif thing, but I don't want to overpower this one. So not quite as sure as himself. Keeping it down here. Aggressive, but not as aggressive, so not drawing attention. We'll draw some uh, bigger ears on this one. Go. That's I'm already liking this one better. So see, so don't don't be afraid to push and pull. I'm gonna close this real quick. They're gonna keep emailing me. Oop! What happened? There we go. That is quite enough of that. Okay. So, here we go again. Um, so, again, I want this one to be a little bit more muscly. So, we're going to kind of bulk up the shoulder a little bit. Um, they're still gif. They're still really thin. Uh, but this one should look thicker than this one, which... Um, Again, I always kind of try to give little hints about the culture that maybe she's in charge because she has other abilities, um, which on Athos is almost always the case. So we got this little hand coming out there. Yep, there we go. Happy little hand. And I'm fine with this one being darker too. Um, that doesn't actually bother me on this. Uh, so we'll kind of go up with this. I do want to have 
little bit of armor on there. Maybe make it a little bit ambiguous of whether this one is the one in charge or not. So we'll kind of have that going that way. And again, I can be a little bit more sketchy with this one because this one's going to be off the screen, sort of. It's going to be out of the line of focus. So, I mean, people will see it, but they'll be more forgiving over some of the shape language that they're seeing on it. As long as, they, as, long as it makes sense. Um... Basically what will happen is someone's brain, if you do it right, will kind of look at it and be like, oh, that's scribbly. So that's clearly not what I'm supposed to be focusing on. I'll focus on this other thing instead, um, which means that you can kind of get bonus details. It's kind of the same way that uh, Jaws and other horror movies are usually more effective when they don't show the monster because you will fill in information with your mind over what you're seeing to the point that I, as the artist, could never capture something that you're going to see there. And so if I just kind of put a couple sketches or scribbles in there to kind of get the idea across, your brain will fill in the information and do the harder work for me. Uh, so one thing I want to see is where is that line that is shading because there is one line right there it's kind of blasting things out okay so there we go all right so now i can go in and do my uh let's see yeah it's all them so let's go ahead and see what that looks like let's uh, zoom out That is probably about how it would look on the screen. So you got a couple of yelling dudes there. It's still a little messy, but I'm going to clean some of that up when I start doing the shading. That is this one, right? Yeah, you sort of see how the uh, background layer on that kind of helps out a little bit, although I think it's a little too overpowering. Bring it up to right about there. Okay. Bring this up here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and kind of clean up this forearm. Uh, so let's go here. Oh, that was a bit too much, wasn't it? Okay. Might need to do that with shading. Okay. So this one, I'm going to name this shading go so on this one we're gonna go to our color swatches uh, yeah probably there's fine paint bring the opacity up a little bit with this I want to work a little bit further away uh, because the goal is to kind of get a um a specific feel i don't want to go too crazy although i do need to go a little bit lighter on this because i do want to kind of push home the harsh light it's just little touches here and there they'll draw it out Nope, that was too far. Although, yeah, I'll, I'll come back and tackle that. Uh, so let's see. Put that there. Let's 
So I don't know if any of you guys uh, paint miniatures, but this is kind of the um, the same theory here that you're just kind of trying to pick up highlights to draw attention to certain features uh, that you want people to focus on. Um, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, and so this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the uh, the shades. So we're pretty much just working in one color. I'm going to knock that down way from 75 because I don't want to do this uh, really blow out color or the uh, the shapes rather. So this just kind of grounds the creature in its background, just kind of make it look like, oh, hey, these things belong here. And a uh, little bit of a trick. So you can sort of see right back here, not much is going on as far as drawing goes. I am going to push that just a hair more. So let's uh, get a darker color in there. Uh, go back to that. Get that good. I do kind of want to push that a little bit. Losing touch a little bit too much of. Oop, nope, not bigger. Right there. Let's see how that looks. I don't know, I'm kind of digging that. Um, one thing I want to do, sort of seems like his head is turned a little bit more. So I'm going to play with that. Am I on the right level? Yes. I'm going to have the other ear sticking out on this side. That should be good. So let's go back up to shading. Add in there. Let's see how that looks. There we go. We got some gif on a cliff. Cliff gif. All right. I do want to throw a little bit of a shadow down there. So the light is kind of coming from this direction, it seems. That was a shitty job of showing how to do that. Light is kind of coming from here. So the shadows would be right underneath them. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and bake those in. Um, there's two ways to do this. Uh, there's a burn tool, which is this right here. Uh, let me make sure I always get burn and dodge mixed up. Let me double check that. Yeah, burn tool. There we go. Um, and so what the burn tool do is, uh, let's see, is that this one? So you can take that and just, that's actually not doing anything right now. But yeah, I probably get the mid tones down too much on that one um what i was going to say is that i try not to use the burn tool because it kind of blows out some of the colors all right so there's our background so that is actually the one that i want to use so zoom in a hair on this now i'm just going to blast in some rough shadows just to kind of once again, just kind of ground these guys into the into their environment. Okay, 55 might have been. Oh yeah, that's right, because this is way down the opacity on the layer. So if you look over here, this is only 
which is fine for what I'm trying to do. Let's knock that up in size a little bit. So this can be a little bit rougher. And get that up there. Same thing with this guy. Just a quick shadow in there. Apply some things there. There we go. Uh, maybe not that. There we go. And so when we zoom out, now we've got a shadow on the wall. Make this a little bit bigger. Nope, that's too much. Board on that one, redo that. Yeah. So that's pretty good. So now it sort of seems like the light's more coming from that direction, which I can live with. So um, now the question is do I like the whole thing? Let's kick back to this. Let's go right there. So I'll kind of show you a quick what I'm thinking here as far as um, how this should work. And again, I'm doing this as a uh, as another layer that I can just delete. Um, so generally your eye will come in like this, sweep along this, kind of go around this guy, and then that'll lead you out. And um, again, you want to have places that your eye can go where it can rest. Uh, and of course, people will be reading the actual page over here, so you've got a bunch of that, but generally you want it leading in. You've kind of got this big triangle right there, sort of saying, look at this, follow this in, and then it just sort of follows the flow through and out. Uh, and so now that you see that, just sort of see how it reads, that you're going to look to the point of most action, you're going to follow it through. This guy you should see last, which is kind of my goal, which is one of the reasons that I made it really sketchy, was so that um, it's your your brain sees it, but it's just going to be like, oh, I don't need that information. It's going to move on. Like, it's going to focus on these two. And, uh, yeah, so we're probably pretty good on that one. So I'm going to go ahead and sign it and call this one here. So go ahead and put that down there. And we got it signed. Oh, this is kind of funny. So you can sort of see my my signature back in the day was uh, pretty similar. It hasn't evolved much in the last, what, I think this was 2006 was when I did this GIF. Um, yeah, there you go. All right, all. See you next time.